Good morning, First Baptist Church Holland. We are so glad that you are with us uh, this morning. Um, first of all, uh, we just want to welcome you. If we have any guests, please know that there is a guest information card in the seat pocket in front of you. We would love for you to bring that to the back of the church at the end. We have a little welcome station uh, that Pastor Frank will greet you at, just get to know you a little bit. And we would love for that to be your offering this morning. So we have offering stands in the front and in the back. Also, we want to thank those of you that are watching on Facebook. We always appreciate you tuning in online, and we cannot wait to see you here in person. And now it's time for today's Need to Know. So the first thing to know is that next week starts out the Advent season. I'm the kind of guy I've been in Christmas ever since, like, after Halloween. Like, I skip the turkey and I go straight to it. Lexi's not that much of a fan, but I am. Um, and so uh, I think it has something to do with her birthday, whatever. Um, and so uh, next Sunday, you are not going to want to miss it. We have a few sketches going on for you. And then we're also going to have a few singers um, just sing some songs together. It is going to be such a fun time in the Lord. And this is going to continue all throughout Christmas. Um, so you are not going to want to miss a single Sunday. Then uh, into more business kind of stuff. The 2022 proposed budget is going to be handed out at the end of service today. So please make sure that you grab it. And also make sure you start thinking about some questions for December 1st at 6 o'clock. We are going to have a little bit of a budget Q&A. So bring your questions there and hopefully we have answers for you. And there will be a church vote on the proposed budget on Sunday, December 5th. Uh, also, on December 5th, our KFC, our Kids for Christ program, is going to put on a Christmas program. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. It is going to be so good. And then finally, uh, don't forget that we do have calendars for sale uh, to benefit kids, helping kids. This is an amazing ministry, and you want to buy one of those calendars. They are available either in the foyer or they're available in the church office. So now, let's read the Word of God. Ah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm going to read from Psalms 100. And my Bible says, a psalm for giving thanks, an invitation to enter joyfully into God's presence. His faithfulness extends to our generation and beyond. And the author of this psalm was anonymous. So if everyone would just stand so for the reading of God's word, it would be great. Shout for joy Amen. to the Lord, Amen. all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning shouting. Amen. For joy that you are so good to us and we are so thankful we thank you for all you do for us we thank you that we live in a free America That's right. we thank you for the military that keeps us safe for people that have served and people that are continuing to serve we thank you for families we thank you for this Thanksgiving that we will be sharing with families and friends. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for loving us so much and sending your Son, who gave us the greatest gift of all. Sure. Forgive us when we fail you. Forgive us when we forget this. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Miss Linda. 
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? And let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause she's done all that's stealing. And are you desperate for some healing? And let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from the Oh, my God. 
good, good Father indeed. Thank you. You can be seated for just a moment. Thank you. You can be seated for just a moment. What an incredible week that we are about to have. It's a week that we all call Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Miss Linda, for reading Psalm 100, where we can say with our hearts that, yes, we are going to enter this place with Thanksgiving. And we're going to enter this place not only with Thanksgiving, but with praise in our hearts and in our mouths. So thank you for singing. Thank you for worshiping uh, this morning. Now, we've got a few slides going on on the screen, I think. Is that right? My sound people going, yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. And we had the most incredible time this last Wednesday with Operation Christmas Child. And here's, here's what we got. We had 140 boxes that you either brought or we packed Wednesday night. Now, here's, here's a... I, I got a problem, though. This, there's nothing in this one. And we still got... That's not proper English, is it? Jennifer, forgive me. We still have... She's our local resident English teacher, if y'all didn't know that. And she was also the coordinator for Operation Christmas Child this year. Thank you, Miss Jennifer, for what you did with that. We still have several boxes out in the foyer, and it is not too late to pack them and take them, but they have to be taken tomorrow. You can take them one of two places in Temple. You can take them either Emanuel Baptist Church in downtown Temple or Taylor's Valley out on Highway 93. So if you did not have an opportunity to pack a box, 140 is great. What you need to know, what you need to know is two things. Uh, we sat down and um, with the students on one side, Thomas, 40, 40 kids, something like that, 35, somewhere in that ballpark. We had 35 or so students, teenagers, on this side of the auditorium Wednesday night, and another 30 children over on this side, and adults sprinkled in between and betwixt. And part of the thing that some of our children's workers wanted to do was take a student, match them up with one of our children, and walk them through the rooms in which they packed boxes. So it was my privilege to be able to pray over the boxes with that group before we started. And I just encouraged them to do one thing. I encouraged them to do one thing. I said, while y'all are walking through the hallways, while you're walking in the rooms, while you're putting stuff, toys and, and, and socks and, and gloves and whatever else you're putting, soap in those boxes, while you're doing that, pray over those boxes. Because in 140 boxes, you figure every six or seven of those boxes that we are responsible for delivering around this world, one child accepts Jesus for the very first time. Is that not incredible? We're talking, we're talking about 20 some odd children because of your efforts this last week and the, in the, perhaps the weeks prior if you did that at home and brought the boxes already pre-filled. Uh, your efforts will result in 20, the kingdom of God enlarging by 20. And those numbers have been consistent for years and years with Operation Christmas Child. Folks, this is part of our mission. This is part of our ministry. Now, when I asked those students to pray, um, I didn't witness this. I wished I had. Uh, but we had one of, our, one of our students in the fellowship hall, I believe, bring one of their boxes and began to pray with a raised hand over that box out loud. He didn't care if anybody heard him because he prayed to an audience of one. And that audience of one, God the Father, heard that out loud, out loud sweet vocal prayer of Cole Repon. Cole, thank you so much for praying this last Wednesday night over our boxes, because that's what God does, and that's what God uses to bless the efforts we have here on this earth. So you pray as only you can. You give as only you can, and you support these missions and the ministry as only God has called you to do. We thank you, and I appreciate it as your pastor. Uh, for being a part of a ministry and a mission 
that really is going to make an incredible difference in God's kingdom. And again, it's not too late to, to add a box or two or three or ten or twelve. It's not for the numbers of boxes. It's for the lives that those represent. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then as we, uh, as we come to the next phase of our worship service, I've got one little thing I just want to read to you as we prepare our hearts to sing this next hymn that is so well loved by all of us. But let's pray, and, and when we get through that, if you've got an offering, uh, then you feel free to bring it to one of our offering stands either at the front or at the back. Uh, if you've got a card, if you're a guest of ours, you can bring your guest card, and that would be the time to do that as well. Father God, thank you for loving us. What an incredible time. When we see God's people of all generations, from first graders, lower elementary to high school and college age and senior adults, those of us that have been uh, endowed with a little bit more experience because of our age. And they're all together. And they're all accomplishing your will and your purpose that you have given us several thousand years ago to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And Father, this is exactly what Operation Christmas Child does. And I'm so grateful to this church family for following through. Lord, we love you. Let all that we do, all that we say, be done for your honor and glory so that lives may be changed. Hearts softened, surrendered to your will and your ways. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen and amen. We're about to sing this song, one of the most popular in our hymn book, besides just a couple of others, Amazing Grace. It is well with my soul. And I know you perhaps have heard the story, but I just want to read it to you again. This is out of book. Called Then Sings My Soul by Robert J. Morgan. Robert Morgan is the author of the book Reclaiming the Lost Art of Biblical Meditation, which I highly recommend. And when I can get them for five bucks again in bulk, I will and hand them out because it's a book that can transform your life. But this is just a book of stories that he put together about songs that mean so much to us. When the great Chicago fire consumed the Windy City in 1871, Horatio Spafford, an attorney, heavily invested in real estate, lost a fortune. About that time, his only son, age four, passed away to scarlet fever. Horatio drowned his grief in his work, pouring himself into rebuilding the city and assisting the 100,000 people in Chicago who had been left homeless. In November of 1873, he decided to take his wife and daughters to Europe. He was close to D.L. Moody and Ira Sankey, two great pastors and evangelists, and he wanted to visit their evangelistic meetings in England and enjoy a season of vacation. So in an urgent matter derailed Horatio in New York. He had to stay there a while. He decided to send his wife, Anna, and their four daughters, Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie, on ahead on the ship. And as he saw them settled into a cabin aboard the luxurious French liner, an unease filled his mind, and he moved them to a room closer to the bow of the ship. And then he said, goodbye, and I promise I'll see you soon. During some small hours, November 22nd, 1873, as the ship glided over smooth seas, the passengers were jolted from their bunks. The ship had collided with an iron sailing vessel and water poured in like Niagara. The ship tilted dangerously. Screams, prayers, and oaths merged into a nightmare of unmeasured terror. Passengers clung to posts, tumbled through darkness, were swept away by powerful currents of an icy ocean. Loved ones fell from each other's grasp and disappeared into the foaming blackness. Within two hours, the mighty ship vanished beneath the water. 226 fatalities included Maggie, Tanetta, Annie, and Bessie. Mrs. Spafford, Annie, was found unconscious, clinging to a piece of the wreckage. And when the 47 survivors 
landed in Cardiff, Wales. She cabled her husband with two words, quote, unquote, saved alone. Horatio immediately booked passage to join his wife. En route, on a cold December night, the captain called him aside and said, I believe we're now passing over the place where the ship went down. Safford went to his cabin, could not go to sleep. He said to himself, you know, it really is well. It is well. The will of God be done. And he later wrote his famous hymn based on those words. The melody was written by Philip Bliss, who soon after himself perished along with his wife in a terrible train wreck. A song filled with what we might look at as such terrible sadness, but what joy and what peace and what comfort this has brought to millions of people since the 1800s. I stand, let's sing this song with your heart. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows Oh, Lord. 
Thank you. You can be seated. We are, uh, if you'll look around, you probably see a few less people this week than last week when we had 107 or whatever that was last week. Uh, I think primarily it may have something, it may, it may just have something to do with the fact that school is out. But thank you students for being here on the second row, which is really I call the front row because you know, that's just a good thing to call it. But the other reason we may be down a little bit is sometimes you get some people that come into your worship service that are uninvited. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm not talking about guests. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about things you really just don't want in your church. Frank, you're the pastor. Why would you say that? I, I don't know. I just know on the opening day of deer season in Michigan, Here's what one church had joined them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Some guests just don't know how long to stay, and uh, they don't mind breaking windows to get in or out. So uh, maybe that's, maybe some of y'all are thinking, I'm not being in here when a deer crashes in. You might think, well, that was Michigan. This is central Texas, Frank. This is Holland. There were three bucks out in this field, Travis, three weeks ago. All right, three weeks ago, late one night. If you see me coming to the church one Sunday morning during deer season, I'm carrying a gun. That's why. I'm not scared of people. I'm not scared of deer either. I just won't put meat on the table. That's all. Uh, but no, I would not do that in the church or in the church back field. You know, maybe a bow and arrow, but not a gun. But right, uh, we won't go there. But anyway, I want you to listen, listen carefully as we embark upon a time where we really do truly just as operation christmas child showed we want people to come not just necessarily to our church but in the kingdom of god because god's setting a table for them and where does this come from this is probably not i was planning on this being our last table message there's probably going to be one more it'll be after the christmas season but there's another invitation god has for us concerning his table and we'll get to that later. But right now, Psalm 23. I want you to stand again for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 23. A psalm of David about the Lord being his shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. In fact, I tell you what. Let's read it along together. Let's read it out loud. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life psalm 23 you may be seated father god again thank you for loving us and thank you for being our good good father and a good great shepherd i pray i pray father that our worship 
is pleasing in your sight. Amen and amen. We have been looking at Psalm 23 and talking about a table. And I want you to know, not only did we this last week have this incredible time on Wednesday with Operation Christmas Child, but on Thursday, we had some folks come up here and prepare some things to put on a table at Thanksgiving for some of those less fortunate. And I don't know what all was in all of the bags that were being distributed, but this is just a smattering of the samples that Miss Jerry put together for me uh, on Wednesday when I asked her, or Thursday when I asked her to do that, because there's going to be some people in the community of Holland about 20 families is my understanding. Oh, oh yeah, we've got to have gluten-free, high-fiber pinto beans. Yes, we've got to have those, right? All right, and peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter is the, is the choice of champions. And some rice and, and some fruit, rageous sweetened rice. Oh, this looks pretty good, Miss Jerry. I might have to remember that this box is in that pantry when I'm hungry. Uh, I like cereal. Some meat, all kinds of meat, tuna, chicken, manwich type stuff, and yes, some green beans and vegetables and, and corn and, and that sort of thing, and some more more beans and some uh, armor treat original, kind of like spam, and spam you know is a choice delicacy in parts of the world. I'm not sure about this part, but it's a choice delicacy, yes, and there are people that love spam. Welch's grape jelly Yes, and all kinds of, all right, Seth and some of those college, do y'all live on ramen noodles when you're on college? Is, is that just a, is that just a, a, you know, it's not really a theory, is that just a make-believe something that people just want to say college kids live on ramen noodles? I just know ramen noodles weren't around when I was in college real I probably would have lived off of them, the, the shrimp-flavored ones especially. So this is just a little bit. It's not probably, Miss Jerry, what would you say, about a third of what y'all actually gave out to 20 different families that showed up? And we had, I don't know, eight or ten of y'all were in there helping uh, deliver those packages to those families that were in need and they also received a large turkey in each one of those vehicles. God's doing an amazing thing through you. That's what I want you to realize. And sometimes we get caught up in the things of the world that might want to take us down. We get caught up in the negativity. We get caught up in this society, especially right now, where it's Mm, it's just, I'm just, mm, I'm, mm, I don't agree with that. I'm going to let the world know it, and I can do that by Twitter. I can do it right now. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you what Lou Giglio said when he wrote his book. The text message he got when he was so proud that one of his enemies was falling, and he wanted to talk about it. A guy that's impacted thousands of lives with the gospel message. And his friend writes back, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. So when all of this is happening, and in the middle of this world in which you have to live, and you have to sometimes walk in those places every day when you go to work, or when you come home from work, and you, you go home, and it's, it's just mayhem. It's just a crisis one after the other. And the the temptation is, I'm going to give the enemy a seat at my table. But in the meantime, we got people putting food on table. It's not an enemy. So what can you find to do to inhabit the verse when God said, I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. And the scripture says in Psalm 34, Oh, taste and see that what food he puts on your table. Oh, taste 
and see that it's good. It's good. It might be crazy right now. How crazy do you think it was for Horatio Spafford to get that notification? His four-year-old son just passed away. All four of his daughters saved alone the message. And we have it as well out of the brokenness of someone's life. Sometimes when things break and they heal, they're stronger than they were before the break. I am praying your Thanksgiving season is not full of brokenness. I'm praying that you can set aside some of the petty things that sometimes when when families come together and you hadn't seen Uncle Billy Bob for, for the, since the last year, and you know Uncle Billy Bob's going to come in just, and you're just going, oh, you just got to put up with Uncle Billy Bob and Aunt Sue. Oh, Aunt Sue. Oh, you're, Aunt Sue, I heard that story 23 times in this last year. Would you please do it? Put the pettiness away. It doesn't matter. Put something on the table and pull up a seat with God who's prepared the table for you in the presence of whoever shows up. Our family sometimes challenges, aren't they? They're not the enemy. They're not the enemy. Years ago, I had a family that I loved dearly whose students, all three of them were in my student ministry two girls and a boy, and one of those girls was having some trouble in high school, all kinds of trouble, and straying away from the way her mom and dad raised her under the Christ-like attitude of the church and even their home life, and, and the dad was kind of at wit's end, and he said, well, can you help? Uh, well, God can. I can't change anybody, but God can. And so I met with a young lady several times, one-on-one, and, and uh, kind of in an office when other people were there, but you know, keeping all of that out in the open, but yet private conversations. And then after those series of private conversations, I called mom and dad, and I said, I need to have one more meeting, but it's with the three of them. And as I showed up at their house one evening, I just had a little yellow sticky notepad. Y'all know what those are? Yeah. You've seen them before, haven't you? You buy them by the dozen at Sam's and Walmart. Ain't nothing special. But I showed up with a little, little sticky notepad and, and a Sharpie. And I sat all three of them. We were in a bedroom. I sat them all three on the edge of the bed. I said, I have nothing to tell you other than this is not what God wants for your family. And I wrote something on that sticky note. Each one had the same thing. I gave each one of them. And I said, I want you to put it right here on your forehead. And they're looking at me like I was, what's wrong with this guy? We need some counseling. We need some help. I put that little sticky note on each one of them's head. And I said, I, I simply want you to read. Mom and Dad, I want you to read what's on your daughter's forehead. And daughter, when they get through, I want you to read what's on mom and dad's forehead. I want you to read it out loud. And mom and dad looked, and tears started flowing. They hadn't even read anything. They saw it. They looked at their daughter, and what they said was what was written. You are not my enemy. And daughter looked at mom and dad and read each one of them. You are not my enemy. I prayed. There's nothing else to say. I didn't have those words of wisdom. I'm trained as a biblical counselor, not as a counselor like we have some in our congregation that we're so grateful for even now that are trained in, in some other type of family counseling. Now, we could get a little bit of that through seminary, but not to that degree. I had nothing to say but a prayer. 
And I prayed that prayer and walked out and left them alone, crying on each other's shoulder. That young lady, what happened to her? Well, she ended up going on several kind of gap year type mission projects for the summer in Africa to some war-torn, really, really hard countries. She and her sister both, her younger sister both. And she was featured on one of our own Southern Baptist Convention Lottie Moon promotional videos. Just a couple years after that, she married a pastor, had some beautiful children, been serving in church ever since. Doesn't mean there's still not some things that come up. But folks, I'm not, I'm not that smart. But God is a good, good father. And God will meet you where your needs are, which is why when we come to this week of Thanksgiving, we can look at Psalm 100. And as we look at Psalm 100 and read that again, thank you, Linda, for the way you read that and the introduction you even gave. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. A joyful noise. It's, we're in the midst of a pandemic, on the backside of a pandemic. We hope the backside of a pandemic. We hope we're coming to the end of the tunnel and we can see the light. We don't know that. We thought that a year ago. A full year ago. Let the mask come down. We thought it. We're still not through it yet. But we can make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. We can serve the Lord with gladness. We can come into His presence with singing. We can know, we can know, we can know that we can know that He is God. It's He who made us and we are His. We are His people. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture, which means He's the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. So what does that mean? We can enter His gates, His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. It doesn't matter what's going on around the world. The news is going to tell you all that stuff, and it's not good, most of it. Your family's going to walk in this week, and some of their news is not going to be good. It's not going to change the fact that we can enter His gates with thanksgiving. It is thanksgiving. We can enter His courts with praise and let your house and the doors your family walks through or your friends walk through the door of your house be the gates of praise. When they walk into your house, let them know they've come to a house of God. There should be a church in every house. In every house should be a church. That's Spurgeon. That's not Frank. Let your house be like that. Give thanks to him. And bless his name. And then there's a reason why. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness endures to all generations. It's those same generations that we talked about just a few moments ago. Sitting in this room Wednesday night. And there were times I could do nothing but just weep. When I walked out in that hall and raised my phone up to try and take a picture. And this hall right here was filled side to side from the front of the hall to the end by the end. Only God can do some things. And you know what God chooses to do? He chooses to choose imperfect, selfish, sinning people like you and like me to accomplish His purpose. Only God would take losers like us and say to he who overcomes, to him shall be victory. Victory in Jesus. So thank you for what you do as an overcomer because we are not alive in our sin. Our sin should be dead to us, though we are still sinners. We are a new creature. The old has passed away, Paul told the church at Corinth. Behold, all things have become new. This Psalm 
100 is the crowning jewel of the Old Testament hymn book. It has two sections, verses 1 through 3 and verses 4 and 5, each calling for praise and giving reasons why we should praise. The psalm transitions from the first part of book 4 of Psalms. If you look in your Bible, as you look at Psalms, there are books of Psalms. We say Psalms, let's turn to Psalm 42. Is that a book of Psalms? No, that's a psalm. It is a psalm, like in the hymn book, because it's a hymn book. The Psalms is hymns. They are hymns. And so we don't say Psalms 42, we say Psalm 42 because it stands alone. We don't say Psalms 33 because Psalm 33 stands alone. Just like we don't say, how great thou art. We say, how great thou art because it's a hymn. It's one song. And each one of these is one song. And so within 150 Psalms, songs, there are five different books. And this transition, Psalm 100, transitions to the final part of the book 4, which simply is beginning with Psalm 90 and ending with Psalm 106. Most scholars believe this psalm was used as a second temple as a thank you offering to God. J. Vernon degree, uh, McGee describes this psalm as the grand finale Beginning with Psalm 94, and in this section of Psalms, we see the Lord Jesus Christ as King Jehovah. We see him, even in Psalm 93, the Lord reigns. He's robed in majesty. Contained within this psalm is the thought, the future reign of Jesus Christ here on the earth. Jesus is coming back. Within this section in book 4 of the Psalms, Jesus is coming back. It's a clear and concise message. And McGee points out that the first time Jesus came, he did not come in majesty. No, the first time Jesus came, of which we're about to celebrate, when we call, as was said by Thomas this morning in the announcements, we begin the Advent season. It's the coming of the Lord Jesus, but he didn't come in majesty the first time. No, Pastor George McDonald says it this way. He came as a little baby thing that made a woman cry. Yes, and that cry, by the way, broke 400 years of silence from God. Yet God hadn't spoken a word through his prophets for 400 years. And his first word was a baby crying. And that's the season that we're about to embark upon that we are so excited, but yet he is coming again. And he's going to be clothed in majesty. And we are going to be able to sing and praise. And that's why the psalm towards the end of book four, uh, he, the writer wants us to celebrate. The writer wants us to say, it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. God's prepared a table that's full of good stuff. Come, taste it. Sit down with God. And invite somebody else with you. Who else is going to be able to sit at the table of God. A couple of thoughts about this. The word in verse or the phrase in verse 1, make a joyful noise. That's the word in Greek or, or in Hebrew, ruah. It's like a chant. Make a joyful noise. Joyful noise. Ruah. It's this thing that comes from deep within and we sound an alarm. And that alarm is that our God Range, and you may not know it, but you are not his enemy. He is not my enemy. And we need to come and sound the alarm that God possesses his people. These are my people, the sheep of my pasture. You belong. To God. Second verse, serve the Lord with gladness. That's a word, abode. It's work, it's serve, it's cultivate, it's do. And it can be translated worship. Worship the Lord. When the ship goes down. 
when she dies of cancer. When that terrible automobile accident occurred. We have reasons to be thankful and to praise and to worship the Lord. Because this word God in verse 3 is the word Elohim. It's used 2,600 times. It's tied to his formal name, Yahweh. It's tied to Exodus 3.14. I am that. I am. God said to Moses to tell the people, I am that I am. I am. Who do you need me to be? I am that. I, I am that I am in such a manner that all you got to do is understand that I be who you need me to be. I am. Be. I am. And I will meet you at your greatest point of need because bless. Bless, verse 4. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. This is what we get to do. And the word bless is so very interesting. The word bless has as its root in the original language the same word for, yeah, me. We're to bless the Lord and bless His name. And the very fact that God in His oversight and in His instruction to those that He gave these words to by anointing of the Holy Spirit. He wanted them to know because they're reading in an original language that they understood. We don't understand that original language. But they wanted, He wanted them to know when I say bless the Lord, you can do that on bended knee because sometimes when we're so high and lifted up and haughty, it's hard to bless. The Lord, so he puts the root word of the very appendage in the word bless. That's why we need to study to fully understand what this means. His steadfast love that endures forever, his faithfulness to all generation, it's said, it's a beauty. It's not just love, it's beauty, it's devotion. He is devoted to us. It is His mercy. It's all-encompassing of God's great love and faithfulness that He's given to us. And He's showing us mercy. And He's saying, Won't you come? Please. I, I know you're in a rut right now. I know stuff's going on that's not good. I know you're having to make some terrible, hard decisions. <laughs> Won't you come sit down? Join me. Join me. Bless the Lord. There's seven verbs of Psalm 100. And you know how things are. Verbs make things happen. That's what verbs do. That's what they're intended to do. The seven verbs. Make. Make. We are to make. What are we making? A joyful noise. Are you? Easy question. What's the noise coming out of your mouth? What comes out of the mouth comes right here. That's not my words. That's Jesus. The mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. Are you making a joyful noise? Make. Serve. Gladly. Are you worshiping? Because you want to? Or you just think, well, it's what we've always done. It's what I'm supposed to do. So I mean, the doors are open. Here I come. But when I get there, I'm going to complain a little bit because things aren't quite the way I like them. You making a joyful noise? Are you serving and worshiping gladly even when things don't go the way you think they ought to? I mean, after all, it's your church, right? <laughs> it is, right? Is it yours? That's a question. Y'all can answer. Is it your church? No, it's not. It's not. And you are not God's enemy. God is not your enemy. And neither is anybody else that comes in here. If you've got an issue with somebody, 
then the godly thing to do, the biblical thing to do, is not go down the hall and keep it. The biblical thing and the godly thing and anything else you do like that would be classified with three letters, sin. Yes, I am. The biblical thing is to say to them, I just, can, hey, can we talk? And I want to be a blessed Lord at all times. Let his praise continue to be in my mouth, Psalm 34, 1, but I'm just having, I don't quite understand where this is. Can we, can we chat in love? That's a psalm of thanksgiving. And that's what comes out of it, even with Uncle Billy Bob or Aunt Sue or anybody else who comes in here or comes in your place because your house Remember, it's supposed to be a church. Make, serve, come with singing. Got a song in your heart? I sure hope so. No, no, no what? Know that the Lord is God. Do you know Him? Or is your knowledge of God kind of like my knowledge of Michael Jordan? I know about Him. I can quote some stats. I don't know him at all, at all. doesn't know, doesn't really matter what I know about him. If I'm going to say I know him, i got to know him. i got to meet him. i got to spend some time with him. Is God someone you really want to meet, you want to spend some time with, you want to sit at his table and have some conversation, even if the conversation is challenging, He's got some great words for you that can lift your spirit and you can walk away from that table saying, it is well. My sin, oh, the bliss of the glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole. What has He done with the whole? Not just the part of your sin, the whole of your sin. It's nailed to the cross. I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Can you enter his gates with thanksgiving? Can you, verse 6, can you can you give thanks to him and bless his name? You know, a uh, couple of things in closing. We can pray. We may not know what else to do. This past week, Carol and I on really Monday and uh, Tuesday morning went to the state convention, the Baptist Strong Convention of Texas, and there in the exhibit hall was an exhibit set up by Highland Lakes Camp and Conference Center, of which we support. We send students to, we send children to, and we as an adult group have an opportunity to go help them uh, as the New Year comes to help them get ready for summer season. They need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work that a lot of us can do. But they had a little setup with a big miniature bell, like the bell, the church bell. They have one of those set up right outside their, their auditorium. And, and when a child, a student, accepts Christ during a camp or a retreat or whatever the case might be, at the end of that event, they go outside and they have a bell ringing ceremony. And they had this bell sitting up in their booth with a little tree looking thing and had a lot of these little bitty tiny bells hanging by it and uh, I knew about the bell ministry but I wanted to hear it again I said tell me about the bell ministry and so <clears throat> one of the other board members I'm a board member and, and so we were together kind of having a little board meeting with the president with the, the director of Highland Lakes and began to share you know the craziest thing happened after last summer just the one that just passed. He said, people would come and we'd give them this little bell on this little card, and on the back of the card is the first name written of someone that accepted Jesus this past summer. And so lots of people took those out. And by the way, I hope to have a whole bunch of these for us after the board meeting in December where we can pick them up and you can pick up one of these and pray for one person that accepted Christ this past, just a few months ago. So the, there was this family at a table 
at a table sitting down at a restaurant. And as they gathered together, this family gathered together, they prayed publicly over their food. They were believers in Jesus. They prayed over their food. And another couple of people from another table walked over to them and said, y'all must be Christians. You must be believers in Jesus. And the family said, yes, we are. Uh, would you like for us to pray for you? And they said, no, I'm sorry. We're just so thankful that you're Christians. And sitting on the table was this card and a little bell. And, and so one of, the, one of the young gals said, what, what is that right there? And people said, well, this is the name of someone that accepted Jesus at Highland Lakes Camp this last summer. And this young girl said, uh, I accepted Jesus at Highland Lakes Camp this summer. And the people looked at their card and said, is your name Julie? My name's Julie. And it gives the session that I was in for the camp that I was in, J1. Journey one, you prayed for me. That's why we pray over boxes. Because we want God to make an impact in people's lives. So my question to you as we close, that verb, know, know that the Lord, he, <laughs> is God. We are His. Are you? His. I wonder. I wonder. Do you know Him? I know about Him. Do you know Him? Watch the screen. The Bible says my King is the King of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. 
Yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Right. Yeah! That's my king. Yeah. That's my king. I just wonder, do you know him? And if not, there's not a better season. And there's not a better day than today, which can be the day of salvation. Let's pray together. And if there's something that you would like to talk about, if you need to know more, please come see me. Uh, it's, it's Thanksgiving season. You've got other friends and family members you can talk to. But if there's some way we can help you as a church, we would love to help you know, know who Jesus is. Father God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we, yes, in our vernacular, we get to know him through his death, burial, and resurrection. We can live with him eternally. We can enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We can know that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. We can know that you prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemy. We can know that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because your faithfulness endures to all. Generations, Father God, if there's one person in here that needs to know you and follow you and be able to sit down at a table and eat with you, and Lord, let them make that decision today. As we're dismissed, let them hang out for just a minute. Let them call. Let them text. Let them do something to find out more about how to know Jesus. We'll be around. We'll be around today. If that's necessary. We love you and all praise and honor and glory belongs to you because you are God and there is no other. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen and amen. Don't rem 